I'm going to demonstrate with the pull string, this is a Kevlar string, the LS model, and the axial stabilizer. I normally will hold the string off to one side with my finger, and let's see if I can get it to focus. And then I would wind it up around the shaft. I'm going to do this off camera to go faster. And I'm not going to wind it up all the way. You only have to do 10 or 20 windings really to make this work. So here it is wound. And my finger's on the other end. I didn't wind it all the way because I'm not going to pull it real hard this time. All right, so now I keep tension, I hold it down, and you don't want to push this down too far. Hold it steady, pull it. And just guessing from experience, that's probably only about 2,000 RPM. It's a nice pull, that would probably go for eight to 10 minutes. My record with the LS model and the axial stabilizer is 17 minutes and 25 seconds. I'm sure I could beat that now because I've had a lot more practice in the last couple months, but I don't really spin this one as often simply because the MV is way more interesting. And I'll show you that next. Put that one back. This is the MV. If you look at this MV, there's a little piece of reflective tape on it, and that is used with my laser tachometer, uh, which I will show in another video. So again, put my finger in the ring, and I'm going to wind the Kevlar string up all the way. I hold it off to one side. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to wind it all the way up offline, off the camera here. It only takes about 10 or 15 seconds to wind it up. And there it is. I am in the habit of holding it all with one hand. And then I take the axial stabilizer and I use the other end. Hold it down. And I'll try to do this so you can see. And actually that had so much momentum that it flew off. Uh, that's only because this inventor set that we have here today is the earliest prototype and the lip here is not the full depth so they don't spin off of the new one and I'm gonna grab a new one right now on camera so here is the new one which does not have that issue and since I want to spin in with a little bit of momentum let's see if we can pick it up there I picked it up and I set it down on the new one and you can see on the new base, that's the, the standard base that comes with the inventor set, now it has a deep enough lip here that it can't fall off. And that has a lot of momentum. While that one's going, I'm going to start up another one. We're going to use this silver one. And this silver MV model has the potential for a lot more momentum simply because it has faster a back seven bearings on the inside uh, right here. So I'll wind that one up. And you can hear that has a lot of momentum. It's making a little bit of noise and that's because this one has hit the floor quite a few times. And in our shop, the floor is quite hard. So I believe that uh, steel ball in the end is probably damaged by now. I'm going to get in camera view here both areas, both of these, and uh, we'll spin the silver one. And I got more of a straight uh, up and down axial position when I spun this silver one. So it's moving considerably faster than the brass MV, but it looks almost like it's not moving simply because I got a straight up and down. Uh, that silver one does have a silicon nitride contact ball so it is a lot more efficient. And hopefully this answers some of your questions on how to use the axial stabilizer. I'm going to set that right there. 
I will uh, film another video later in the week that shows the precision stabilizer system with the two of them together. Thanks for watching.